real estate hustlers, welcome to episode seven of The Real Estate Hustle, a podcast about everything to improve and grow your real estate career. We are broadcasting live here in our studio in Rexburg, Idaho on Facebook Live. And uh, hey, right. if you guys are listening to us on iTunes and Google Play, on Stitcher or, any, or YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, guys. Make sure to please hit that. Helps us to grow the channel. Helps us to get this information out to more people. Uh, also, make sure to join our private Facebook group by searching Real Estate Hustle on Facebook. We'll get you added into that group. Our show today is brought to you by the Real Estate Hustle Academy. The Real Estate Hustle Academy is a very hands-on group instruction boot camp to get your real estate career going and get it where it needs to be. Uh, the next enrollment is starting now. Go to therealestatehustle.com slash go. Go. So right here next to me is Mr. Travis Green, as always. That's and right. uh, we've got Greg Budiske working our tech table today. Mm-hmm. He's got a whole table set up over there. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> and, and, and we are joined by Mr. Alma Merrill, all the way from Salt Lake City area. <laughs> and uh, we'll give him an introduction here in, in uh, just a few minutes. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> so we're excited uh, to have everybody here today. Again, it takes a team to make these things happen. So, uh, but Travis, let's go ahead and kick this off with uh, with our weekly real estate trivia game. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Can uh, I participate you, this time? Right. You can. <laughs> oh, you can. Yep. Right. You're 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 up. You're good. So today we are going to be playing for a fifteen dollar Amazon uh, gift card this Woo. week. So yeah, you know, we're five bucks higher than last week. That's right. Week. It's right. We're making progress, but it's good. It's good. All fun. Amazon's got some great stuff. So. Uh, here's what we're going to do. You need to be the first guest to answer in the comments. The closest person to guess without going over is the one who's going to win. So comment in the, in the comment section, the person who's closest without going over will win. So here we go. All right, let's do this. All right. How many realtors are currently in the USA? How many are in the USA? More than 10. 120,000. Write that down, Greg. 120,000. Alma's definitely not going over. Okay, he's not going over. How many realtors are currently in the USA? All right. Okay. Should we punchline? Yeah? But Is that what you're looking for? A million three hundred. No, I can't say it. What? We got to wait till the end. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Wait to the end. I gave you. You a- just gave the answer. <laughs> well, okay, he he the started answer. the answer. It's over a million. Yeah. Okay. Okay. According to Fannie Mae, what is the national average for the time it takes to close a loan in 2017? Hmm. How long does it take to close a home loan in 2017? The average. This is uh, this is the national average. Okay. okay. Awesome. All right. Number three. How many days has it been since <laughs> Travis? That would be me, has gotten a haircut. That's a strange question. Who made this? <laughs> <laughs> How many days has it been since I personally have gotten a haircut? I know the answer to that question. About, Mainly because I write yeah. the questions. Okay. Well, Look at his hair. All right. Out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that. Okay, so real quick. <laughs> How many realtors are currently in the USA? That's question According one. According to Fannie Mae, what is the national average for the time it takes to close a loan? Okay. And how many days has it been since I apparently have gotten a haircut? So there you go. So <laughs> ponder those and comment in the uh, comment section, please. The comments we'll, are already starting to roll right. in. People Perfect. are anxious for that gift card. Perfect. So we're going to wait till the end of when? Uh, till the end of the podcast. Fine. Okay. So yep. got to hang in there. Yep. All right. So yes, we are excited to have Alma here today on the podcast. Alma is a, he's a, he, he works with a great company. The Everest Group uh, is Century 21 in uh, Salt Lake City is the highest ranked highest producing century 21 company in the world i mean huge and awesome. uh, and so he's so here cool. with us alma's going to talk to us a lot today about some really great tactics uh, role play some uh, uh some content about dealing with for sale by owners cold calling uh, objection handling those kind of things very very good information we just had a great meeting with alma and he shared some of these things with us so we're excited to hear some more and we want to just go ahead and and uh in just a minute here turn some time over to alma but first before we do we're going to start things off with asking alma three questions All excellent right? All i right. like questions here we go so the answer to your hair is 15 days okay okay perfect <laughs> all right you might be surprised actually all right all right so the first three questions that we're going to ask alma is number one if you could go back and start your career over again what would you do different i would definitely be more consistent consistency hands down okay. consistency Great. is with, with what with calling 
prospecting. Okay. Yep. All right. All of the all of the biggest producers in real estate mm -hmm. are prospectors. They have a prospecting base. They're machines, yeah. And then they compensate what they're not getting in prospecting mm -hmm. with SOI and with referrals right. and things like that. And so if you have a, a prospecting based business that you're consistent with, you're going to grow you exponentially are. regardless yeah. of how many you have in your first level in your SOI or your COI. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. I like that answer. Okay. So, so consistency in, uh, in phone calling prospecting, just stay regular and routine at it regularly daily. Definitely. Okay. Religiously. Perfect. Number two, what do you enjoy about your career? Absolutely nothing. No, okay, I'm kidding. Perfect. <laughs> I only like money. No. Yeah. So, you know, it's an interesting thing. So I came before I got into real estate, I came from the medical industry and I was a service tech, right? Okay. That was back when me and Rick lived in Southern California. Nice. Actually, when I first met you, this is, I think what I was doing. And, um, I delivered oxygen. Most of my job was delivering oxygen yeah. tanks to elderly people and people with diseases. And one of the things I realized when I got into, or when I got out of that business was I missed serving people. Mm. I missed helping people, mm -hmm. you know, because at that point I was at a point. nine to, or nine to five job. I was making $12 and 50 cents an hour. I was driving a truck mm -hmm. and, um, it just, there was very unfulfilling and, and I didn't have communication and the, the dialogue with people that I loved when I served them. And so when I came across real estate, it was really a natural fix for that need. You know, it was really a natural fix to be able to serve people, help yeah. them in ways that literally make them cry sometimes, Boy. change their lives. Yeah. And Boy, so have we cried with some people. We have. Yeah. We have. We appreciate that. And, yeah. and I like that you brought that up because it really is. We're more than just real estate agents as we actually are in the business of changing lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, no matter how you know, far fetched. We think that sounds it's right. It's exactly Absolutely. You, do, so. you know, I don't have any, I don't have any distinct desire or love for the structure of a house, mm -hmm. right? It's what goes into the house and who's in the house and what we're accomplishing for people that really brings any type of fulfillment. That is great. You know, I've been asked that question myself and, and I would concur with everything you said. It's about seeing the eyes light up of the buyers. Right. It's about Definitely. seeing them fulfill their dreams and the rest of it comes right after that. So that's Absolutely. great. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, question number three, if you had one choice to jump careers and do something else, doesn't matter how far fetched it is, what would it be? It would be kind of what I'm doubling as right now. That's a real estate coach. Okay. Yeah. I All love right. real estate coaching. I, that's the, that's the whole idea, right? Was I want to help people. I just want to help more people. Now. Right. And Great. so I started yeah. my real estate coaching.com and uh, it's where I'm able to get down to the nitty gritty of what people need with, as far as scripts and dialogue and use mm -hmm. scripts and dialogue that actually work for people. <laughs> right. Not the stuff that's been around. There's a lot of stuff online that's years, just yeah. so incredibly outdated and, and yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. bringing it with the times. That's, that's one of the most important things is that it's outdated. Yeah. Right. Yep. I mean, I look back towards, I look back at um, the way people spoke even just 30 mm. years ago, yeah. even just 20 years ago. Interesting. Did we dialogue differently in the 1980s than we do now? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did we dialogue differently from the fifties till now? Yeah. Big change. No doubt. Big change. And yeah. so the way we look at things now, the way we dialogue with people now is stra drastically different than the way we did back then. And so right. what I do with my system is just dialogue on a level that people understand for our day and age. So I, I want to just share the dialogue that, that Alma's talking about. It isn't a way to be more, more sneaky under the no. rug, this or that, try to steal the deal or whatever. When we hear the word dialogue, what we're talking about is a way to understand a way to understand a person's needs so that you can help them more. It's right. the positive side of dialogue. So honestly, we'd like to just turn the time over to Alma and let's just visit with us. Alma, share some thoughts. Real okay. quick before we do. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But we just had a really awesome office training with Alma. He just yeah. had about a good hour and a half with all of our agents in our office mm -hmm. and, and went through what he's going to be teaching you guys today. On the Fantastic podcast. agents, by the way. And uh, thank you. Thank they you. they yeah. are awesome Great people. Agents. You know, we are very, very picky and very selective yeah. of who we bring on yeah. our company. And so we can say that we've got a rock solid team here at mm -hmm. Team Green. That's right. Um, just fantastic right. agents. So we are very excited that Alma made the trip up here. He, uh, the, pay attention to what he's going to uh, talk to you guys about today, guys. It, eat it up. It is just fantastic. Yep. It will change the way you do real estate. I can promise you that. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. You know, one of the things that I've realized throughout time is that it's, you've got to have more than just a, a script, right? You've got to have a feel for people and you've got to have mm -hmm. a dialogue with them that they can relate to on a high level and also not feel pressured. True. 
I mean, you know, one of the things that you mentioned was that we didn't, we don't go in just guns blazing. Right. And when we were talking in there, you know, one of the things that I looked at, um, was, okay, what, what's your area like? What type of homes do you sell? Who do you typically sell to? And then we can adjust, okay, now what's our dialogue going to be for that information or for those homes, right? And every little market is different. I was yeah. just going to mention that, that, that your area in Salt Lake City or maybe our area in Rexburg or, or neighboring communities, they're going to react differently. They have a different mindset, different mm-hmm. feel, so it, it will change. Right, yeah. And if I go, you know, if I go tromping around on a muddy farm out here in Idaho <laughs> in a – you will suit. get shot. I will get shot. They're going to think I'm somebody who's either taking their money or wants to take their money. Yeah. And yeah. so the reality is, is you've, you've got to dress for the part. You've got to act for the part and you've got to mm-hmm. refine your system constantly. Yeah. And so if I took, I wouldn't use the exact same dialogue, right. That I use in my scripts in suburbia, Salt Lake city, as I do out here in Idaho. Right. Right. And so you want to refine it, but the basics are the same. Got the it. cadence of your communication has to be consistent mm-hmm. with, with your surroundings. So you want me to give you an idea? Let her rip. Let's do it. All right. So I walk up to you and you're a farmer. Right? Okay. So let's, let's, okay. Farmer Rick. Knock, knock, knock. Farmer Rick, you don't have a phone number. So I got to come knock on your door. That's right. right? <laughs> and I walk up and I'm not wearing a suit. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm going to wear what, probably what you're wearing there. Right. Yep. That's what you expect to see. You want to have a, mm-hmm. a, a shirt and a, in some pants or jeans or and some boots, right? Yep. Because that's what you're doing. Definitely want a shirt and pants. And I'm going to walk up and I'm going to say, <laughs> hey, howdy. Right? Yep. yep. How you doing? Oh, good. How you doing? What can I help you with? Well, my name's Alma. I'm with uh, Century 21. I'm sure you've had a ton of agents come walking up your driveway trying to talk to you about selling your property, right? Right. Yep. Goes like this. Uh-huh. Goes like yep. this. Yeah. So finish off. Yeah, well, uh, absolutely, I have, and you know, I'm I'm just not interested in working with any of them. Yeah, I wouldn't be either if I were you. Fortunately, the purpose for me coming to see you today is that we just sold another farm not too far from here. Oh, pretty similar. Look like size wise. How many acres do you have here? We're about sixty five acres. Sixty five acres. Okay, yeah, that's pretty big, similar. Big farmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Comparatively, that's the first number that came to mind. Yeah, sixty five. <laughs> yeah, okay. So in Salt Lake City, sixty five acres is massive. <laughs> in Idaho, you're small sauce, yeah, right? Exactly. So. Oh, 65 acres. Okay. Was it part of, I'm going to go into questions. Uh-huh. Was this part of an, an, an original farm? It, you know, it's part of the original homestead. And then as you know, when my parents died, everybody got their, their share of the land and everybody got about 65 acres. Wow. So that's really cool. How yeah. many different shares were there? There's six. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. So you did have some pretty good land out it here. It was huh? a huge farm. Yeah. Yeah. Now why not? I know you're, are you selling it for sell by owner? Is that right? Yeah. Doing for sell by owner. Okay, yep. cool. Now, why not just keep it and stay out here? What makes you want to sell? You know, the farming industry has gotten so tough. The, you know, it's so hard to keep up with all these new guys coming into it and all their fancy tractors and everything yeah. that they use. You know, I'm, I'm old school. I don't know the first thing about a computer and I just, it's time for me to get out. Yeah. So that makes sense. Where are you going to head to after you sell? I'm just going to go down to St. George, just go somewhere warm. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's great. So in this process, I don't ever try to get too over involved or too over excited, Mm -hmm. right? If I'm talking to you and I go, Oh wow, that's great. (laughs) You're like, "Eh." I don't know you, you don't care. (laughs) Get off my property. Yeah. Get off my property. So I'm going to come to you in a way that you would want to receive me. Right. Right. And I'm just going to ask you additional questions. And in reality, your listing presentation starts the first moment we speak. Absolutely. Now, whether that's on the phone with a for sale by owner or an expired agent, that listing presentation starts that moment mm-hmm. when you start to speak. And so we want to approach them in a way that is non-risky, right. right? You want to reduce the risk when you talk to them and then bring them to a common ground that's comfortable and lower their barriers. And so, and, and, and a good listing presentation is nothing more than asking fantastic questions. Now I'm going to make a, 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 an assumption here that you are good enough that when you see the farmer walking towards you, the speed he walks, the way he's putting his feet down, the way right. he throws the shovel down or picks it up or the gun out of his holster, uh-huh. whatever it is, you're going to know how to approach <laughs> that, that conversation in the first couple of seconds. Absolutely. If the gun yeah. comes out, just stop. Yeah, probably <laughs> a good right. idea. <laughs> Get back yeah. in the Porsche and drive away. But, no. but, you can, but you can tell how to stage that conversation just by how the body language might even be. And then you kind of know, all right, I'm going to use this idea, this script, that script. And you'll adjust and change as, on the fly right. as you go. And, and we've heard this for years, right? You mirror and match their personality, their body right. language, right. Right. their – they're, if they're walking towards you, you're going to walk towards them at about the same speed, exactly, same body language. That way they feel, unless they're doing this, yeah, you don't want to right. do this. Right? Right. You just want to walk to them with their same speed and talk to them in a way that causes them to go, okay, he's, 
Mm-hmm. He's not trying to overpower me. He's not mm-hmm. trying to be pushy. Yeah. He just wants to communicate with me. Right. Yeah. And really, Perfect. we don't even know if we want to list the home yet, right? We don't True. know if we're going to list the home yet, if we have any desire to list the home, if it's within our best interest to work with him. What would turn you off from listing a home? Interest. Let's talk about that for a second. Great question. So well, let me ask you this. What has turned you off from listing a home? Or has there ever been a time when you've said, I don't want to list a home. I don't want to take this listing. You know, yes. when, when I've been in listing appointments before, let me rephrase that. Almost every time I am in a listing appointment, <laughs> as we're going through the home, looking at the two-tone paints and the granite countertops and this and that, I'm not looking them in the eyes, but I'm just talking and commenting about how beautiful the home is. Right. And then I ask them, so have you thought of a number, a, a price that you're hoping to get out of your house? As I'm making more notes here, oh, $485,000. Okay, this is a 12-square-foot home. Okay, <laughs> great. All right. And see, and I right. purposely ask that every time so I know, are we too far apart? Are they just are, shooting for pie in the sky? Yeah. Or are they so being you, realistic? You know what I find out a lot of is when, when it's a 12 square foot home and they're asking 400 and plus thousand dollars for the property. What I realize is that most of the time they know they're out of their freaking mind. Right. 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 They're testing the market. Right. Mm-hmm. And so my response to that would be something like, well, let me ask you this. I mean, you're, you're asking 485. What do you actually think it's worth? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. It doesn't matter what they're asking. Bring them back to reality. A little What's bit. it worth? Right. Mm-hmm. And then, and then that's the moment that they always agree or they always tell you the truth i should say right they always Perfect. tell you the truth Perfect. they go oh uh, well i know i'm asking 45 but in reality it's probably not worth more than about 350 yeah mm-hmm. and you're like boom this is this huge <laughs> gap yeah and a lot of times right. people are testing the market they don't have a drive to sell their home they don't have mm-hmm. a business a, basically a business plan which is what we do as agents right mm-hmm. we create a business plan and a process for marketing the property, exposing it and bringing people in. Right. And so you kind of get them down to ground zero. They tell you the truth at that moment and then you move forward. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's great. That's great advice. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's that's great. great. Um, Yeah. So I I just, I I think it's so interesting how some people, and I I guess something we talk about too, uh, to kind of keep going on that point. If, if they're shooting for pie in the sky, we tell them all the risks that come with that. You know, sure, okay. Yeah. Someone may come in a, a, the, the chances of a cash buyer are slim to none. No one's just going to come in and cause cash buyers generally aren't overpaying. They're pretty savvy people. Right. If they have that much cash. Yeah. They're not overpaying. So, yeah. Exactly. So, and then you, you tell them the risk of appraisal and the whole deal is just going to yeah. fall apart anyway. So just go through those scenarios and, and things like that. But, um, so Alma today was talking, uh, a lot about, uh, some objection handling. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times when we make these cold calls or for sale by owners, uh, that the walls are up. The barriers right. are up. They don't want to talk to an agent. They're not interested. Why? Because 6,000 other agents have already <laughs> called them. Right. So Alma, how is it? And you are so skilled at this and so good, but can you kind of take us through the process of bringing those barriers down on a for sale by owner specifically, who's been plastered with agent calls, get them on your level and set that appointment. Definitely. And one of the things I want to iterate first, when you, when you are making phone calls or you're talking to people on the phone, mm-hmm. it's critical that or let's actually, let me back up when you're, when you're role-playing mm-hmm. in your office, right? Mm-hmm. We did some role-playing today. Right. Yep. My favorite role-playing is not with another real estate agent. They're going to do and say things that real people don't do and say, <laughs> sure, right. right? They know where you're going. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like she was so easy for me to, yeah. <laughs> to yeah, combat. Right. right. Sorry, Drea. Yeah. Drea. Sorry. Yeah. You were easy. Even though you were like, Oh, I'll be, I'm going to be rough on you. Yeah. No, <laughs> Drea, you were easy. So you're in the top 2% of the easy. Yeah. So, um, so one of the things you, that I always recommend people do when you're role playing, role play with real people. Yeah. Okay. If, especially if you're in a metropolitan area like LA or, or, or Salt Lake city or, you know, Colorado or Florida or something like that, it's critical to, um, approach them in a way that, where am I going? In a way that they, they feel they don't have that risk, right? They don't have the risk, but also when you're, when you're role-playing, you're going to test out your scripts, your dialogue on real people so that when you win, you actually get an appointment. If I go to Drea and I role play with Drea all day and I get really good closing her, that's going to be a lot different than closing a real person on the phone. So if you're, if you're, and it's okay, Mm -hmm. it's okay if you lose on the phone every once in a while, every loss when you're talking to people on the phone is getting you that much closer to winning and, and, and making that money. And usually it's a big win. Right. Okay. Perfect. Love that. So, yeah. So if I'm calling, you know, do we want to do a role play? I, I, I let's do one. I All think right, we should do a role play. So okay. do you uh, want us to pretend like we're not real estate agents? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Pretend <laughs> we're like going to really not. try and back that off. Pretending like we're pretending like we're not doing what we are. Doing. And, and at some <laughs> point, 
at some point, you know, it may make sense for us to do. And I do these on my real estate, on my channel, I do live calls. Yep. So if you want to see a live prospecting call, go to myrealestatecoaching.com on YouTube or Facebook. Um, we'll put a link in the comments as well, guys, and we'll link our channel to his channel today. Um, that way you can, these calls are awesome. They're phenomenal. Uh, take the, the 10 minutes or whatever it is to, to actually watch him go through with a live person. These are actual calls. And it's so interesting to watch how these people just have their wall up. So I'm mean, bigger than Trump's border wall that he was going to build, <laughs> you know, and it's, uh, you know, just these enormous walls and just slowly chips away and they become comfortable. This and just by the end, they're best friends and they're going to lunch. This just became a political <laughs> talk show. <laughs> we're going to have to mark this one political podcast. Political. Yeah. yeah. And we said Trump, so it may be explicit. So, oh, yes. yeah. So when no, you're doing, very, very yeah. good point though. Yeah. Great, great training. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So you are a what? You tell me what you are. I, I am uh what should I be? For sale by owner, expired. Let, let's be, uh, yeah. let, let me just, let me be for sale by owner. Uh, this is something we face a lot in our market because uh, in our market, we have a very interesting market. Two, year, uh, two years, no, last year. Was it last year? We were 40% for sale by owner in our yeah, market. Quite high. 40%. Wow. So it was really quite high. high. Wow. Um, so I know the objections that they have. So I'm going to be just uh, your middle of the road, $280,000 uh, in a small subdivision quarter acre lot for sale by owner. Okay, great. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Hey, I was calling about, uh, you have a home for sale? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. And you were selling that for sale by owner. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. Well, my name's Alma. I'm with uh, Green Team Real Estate. I was just calling um, Team Green Real Estate. Let me say that right. I was just calling. Um, I know you have, uh, you're have. selling that for sale by owner. And purpose for my call is we just sold a couple of properties not far from you there. So I was just calling to get some info about your property. Is that okay? Yeah, that's that's totally fine. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask permission. Right. Okay. Perfect. It's, crit it's critical. Yeah, Breaks okay. down their walls. It's different than hey, I can do this for you. Right. Listen to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about it. How many bedrooms does it have? Yeah, we got five bedrooms in the house. Okay. Five yeah. bedrooms. Okay. And then three how many bathrooms? Is it three? Yeah, there are three baths. Yep. Three bathrooms. So mm -hmm. five bedrooms, three bathrooms. Okay. Yep. And then how many square feet is the house? Uh we're about thirty one hundred. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So thirty one hundred. And then um any upgrades? Um, you know, we put some, uh, just some, some laminate wood in the entryway and, uh, oh, and then okay. just some, some newer carpet upstairs. We haven't done much to the basement, Okay. Uh, but the upstairs we've done just a few minor upgrades like that paint carpet, paint so, carpet. Okay. And yeah. there's some minor upgrades. Yeah. Good. Okay. And then, um, tell me about the kitchen, any upgrades there? The kitchen's Oak. Um, so it's, you know, it's a little bit dated. Okay. It's, uh, you know, it's nothing fancy, but it's, you know, solid cabinets and we personally like them. Hey, I like Oak. Yeah. I like Oak. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> so, okay, cool. but yeah, so it's, you know, it's a little bit dated. It's a, uh, you know, early nineties. So you so. want to laugh with them and share in the obvious moments, yeah. right? When they're, whenever there's an obvious moment when he's like, Oh, it's Oak, but it's dated. You're going to go, okay, <laughs> wait, you don't like Oak. What's wrong with Oak, you know, or <laughs> something. Yeah. And then they go, well, I know, I know. We just, everybody has naughty alder or wherever, whatever they have in that yep. marketplace, you know? Okay, cool. So Oak and then, all right. Anything else? Any tile or granite? Uh, you said, did you say granite countertops? Uh, no, 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 just, no just for okay. Micah. Um, yeah. So no granite. And then the only place we have tiles is just in the bathrooms. It's, it's the original. They're like the six by six squares in the bathrooms. So okay, cool. Yeah. Great. And then it's what does the yard look like condition wise? The yard's actually pretty nice. Uh, we sit on about a quarter acre, fully fenced, full sprinkler system, got a little garden area, um, spot okay. for the trampoline. So flat there's, you know, it's, uh, it's just a, just a big flat yard. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. That sounds good. Well, let me ask you this. I, you know, I don't know if this would work for you or not. It, it may not, but I'm sure there's just obviously a certain amount of cash you need to get out of this home right, in order to make is, it worth it for you to sell. Yeah, right. Which is why we're doing it for sale by owner. Which, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The reason I would do the same thing if I were you at the same time. It, I mean, obviously if we could figure out a way that by working together, we could get the property sold by listing it, putting it on the open market and allowing more people to see it. And you could still net the amount of cash that you need even after the the sale and paying commission stuff like that mm -hmm. i mean obviously if you could put in your pocket what you need on it you'd be open to at least exploring that wouldn't you uh yeah i suppose i would okay yeah. cool so what works best for you afternoons or evenings shut me down uh you know i'm just super busy i need to talk to my wife first we make all decisions together okay so do you um, both work we, we do both work. Yeah. Okay. So when, what time are you guys typically home in the evenings? Uh, it's usually pretty late, you know, around eight. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. yeah that is late. Yeah. Well, fortunately I usually work till about nine or 10. Oh. 
well, let me, how about this? It, why don't you talk to your wife and just make, you know, make certain that she's okay to me. What I could do is come over at about nine o'clock. I have a spot open on Thursday at about nine o'clock. Would something like that work for you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I suppose that'd be fine. Okay. No, yeah. shut me down. No. Say, no, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> no, no, that's, you know, that's not going to work. That's just getting too late in the evening. Too late. Okay. Yeah. What about like, would 8.30 or something like that work for you? 8.30 is a little bit and, tough. That's well, right. and, the, and the reason I, ask, okay, I'm, I am going to interrupt him right here, right? Because he just keeps running me into no, right, right? Right. Well, and the reason I ask, you know, when I come out, it's because he's, he feels a little bit of risk, right? Uh -huh. So I'm going to remove the risk right now. You know what? Uh, what was your name? George, George, you know what, George, when I come out, just so you know, I don't have any high pressure sales pitch or any of that junk. We're just going to look at the house, make sure that it makes sense to sell, that you're going to be able to get the money that you need. If it makes sense for us to work together, great. If not, no big deal. And then you'll, if, if it doesn't make sense for us to work together, you'll at least have some great information from an agent that sells most of the homes here in the Valley. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I suppose that is fair. Okay, cool. Yeah. So let's do that. I'll come over Thursday at 8.30. And then between now and then, George, wait, was it George? George. George. <laughs> That's ironic. My broker is George. So between now and then, George, what we'll do is I'll, I'm just going to look at the numbers, see okay. if it makes sense, do a little bit of research on your home. And then when I come out there, we're going to look at those numbers and see if it makes sense for us to work together. If it does, great. We will list the property. And if not, no big deal. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I, it's very fair. Yeah, I'm open to that. Great. Sounds sure. great. We'll see you there. Thursday at eight thirty. Okay, great. Thanks, Alma. Okay. So we're we're the, dropping the, the we're we're taking the, the the wall down brick by brick, right? Putting them in at ease, very right. smooth, very very subtly. Um, your voice is calm, right? You're not high pressure. You're just kind of taking taking the resistance, taking the nose, turning them around to ways you can help, right? I got the no, but let me show you how I can help, right? Oh, here's another no. I understand that, but you know, I wonder if, and you're mm -hmm. just keeping them going, exactly. And okay. in that, in that second video that I have posted, the, the newest one I put on with the blue label, it says I have right. a friend of the business. That guy, I think I counted nine or no, I'm sorry, seven times that he told me no. Yeah. I closed him seven times before he said yes, <laughs> seven times. But you did it. But you we did. You it. didn't give up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. We got the appointment. And the important thing is, is that they, when we got the important in the appointment, they didn't feel, he didn't feel pressure. That, and that's the, the exact point I was going to bring up. If, if somebody is pushing that hard, generally the, the person receiving that push is going to feel extremely uncomfortable. They're going to not be home when you're coming over, you know, they're going to just keep putting that front up, but you break down those walls so quick and just put them at ease so fast that, uh, you know, I, it's, it's a very successful method for doing it. Awesome. Well, I hope it, I hope it helped you guys and I hope everybody who's listening, it helps you and, and guides you through the process of for sale by owner. You know, my scripts and my dialogue are very specific. It's very simple and it creates, like I said earlier, that cadence for communication that no matter yeah. what you say, mm -hmm. no matter how your no is, I still have a response for your no. Yeah. That makes sense and causes them to, to persuades them. Right. You know, the difference is between between persuading somebody or tricking somebody. What's that? Your intention. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not tricking you into meeting with me. Right. That's a great point. It's it, I'm persuading you to do the right thing because my intention is to help you like I've helped a hundred people. So many last other people. Year. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And I think too, it's important where we're in real estate and we're dealing so much with the emotional side of people that those, those high pressure sales tactics aren't going to be effective. No, you've got to get yeah. on their emotional level and be able yeah. to, to break through those barriers. It's the only way to do it. Be genuine, be willing to help take the skills that you have, the personality you have, marry them up with someone else's need and find a solution. That's what it's about. The rest of it will happen. Right. Yeah. Precisely. Well, we've got just a few minutes. Should we go to our, uh, first off, we want to just wrap things up with Alma. Do you have any parting thoughts real quick in the last minute or so? So the most important thing, number one, be consistent create a cadence for your conversation. Make sure you have a plan every single day and that you are consistent in your prospecting. You will be successful and strong in this industry, no matter what market you are in and be coached. Only 3% of real estate agents coach within their brokerage. They all use, everybody else uses outside real estate coach <laughs> packages. So wow. make sure you get a good one that works well for you yep. and uh, make sure that you are being for them who you need, who they need you to be. Perfect. Love that. Perfect. Well, That's thank awesome. you, Alma. We want to really appreciate, we really appreciate you coming and My great, pleasure. great thoughts, great ideas and advice. And, and, uh, I would encourage you to look up his, uh, YouTube channel and, and, uh, learn, learn yes. all that you can. We have watched so many for sell by owner tactics, so many scripts, so many YouTube videos of people saying, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Guys, this is the only one I've seen work. Everybody's really quick to share their scripts and their ideas. 
Alma is the only one that I've seen that puts live calls on Facebook yeah. and actually converts people into a sale. It's yeah. awesome. Okay. I, I think it's totally cool. Yeah. So, I mean, good for you and kudos to you for being bold enough to show that, hey, my methods work. I'm going to show you right now with this real call. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's uh, rock on, man. Well, I, I hope it helps. So cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. We got to wrap things up here, but let's uh, real quick. Before we uh, before we do, we got to get some answers out to the we, people. We do, yeah. Okay. Let me pull up Facebook here. All right. Okay. What what are people saying? I'm okay. gonna win with the 15 days. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got uh, we got 29 days. To, uh, let's start with the the okay. count for realtors. Okay, how, got, how many realtors are currently in the USA? Okay, 1.3 so, 1.3 million. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So someone let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> the person who guessed six million is way over. So sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, we've got one one million nine hundred ninety nine. Okay. I don't know if that's nine hundred ninety nine or nine hundred ninety nine thousand. Okay. But then let's see. Oh, okay. Someone changed their answer. One million. Okay. And then we've got twenty nine days, twenty four days, thirty five days. Okay. okay. Wait, for what? For the for the uh, how long it takes to close the loan? Okay. 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 So nobody went over, which is good. Right. Okay. okay. It does take more than what everybody guessed to close a loan, uh, and then people are saying <laughs> six days. Okay. Six days on the haircut. Perfect. So I, I didn't make these questions up, guys. So <laughs> tell me. Okay. So should I reveal? Yes. What the, yeah. Uh, let's reveal. Okay. Let's start first with right. the uh, the the number of realtors currently. As I was starting to say, and, and I shouldn't have, 1,305,719. Okay. All right. Okay. According to Fannie Mae, it takes 46 days on average to close a loan. Okay. Holidays will be a little different. Yep. And how many days since I got a haircut? About four hours ago. <laughs> what? Everybody yeah. went over on that Everybody guess. Everybody did. Gosh, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You grow so, fast. <laughs> So that one we'll we'll throw out because yeah. you know, we'll we'll stick to the first two. So we are going to get our winner a fifteen dollars Amazon gift card. We'll go through the comments right after the podcast right. and see who uh, who put those in first. Uh, again, thank you so much to Alma. We're very uh, we're grateful you made the trip up here to do yep. some coaching with Been our great. brokerage and uh, to be on the podcast. My pleasure. So guys, we are going to go ahead and get things wrapped up. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future content, please put them in the comments below if you're watching our Facebook Live. Uh, also put them on our YouTube comments or send us a message. Uh, next next week, guys, make sure to tune in. We have a really awesome guest, another awesome guest. Another one, yeah. He's an attorney. He's a CPA. He is a best-selling author. Uh, his name is Mark Kohler. He's going to be in here to give us some good tax advice for real estate agents. Uh, this is one you're not going to want to miss. We like to write things off, guys, as self-employed people. So he is going to tell us what, everything we can write off, how to structure business. It's This guy is phenomenal. Just released a new book yesterday, in fact. So when he's on the, the podcast, we're going to have to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so anyway, if you haven't yet, make, again, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join our Facebook group. Uh, and make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. We'll be back again uh, once again next week, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. We hold our live streams on Facebook Live. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody next week. And for now, your break is over. Ta-ta. Get back to work, guys. <laughs> Get out there. Keep hustling. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, thanks. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you, Andy. Absolutely. That was awesome. Yeah. That was great. So, pe so, so people want to be where everybody, all the domination is happening, right? Right. So, you just need to educate the agents more mm -hmm. about the domination that's happening in your brokerage. Okay. Your fantastic location here in town, mm -hmm. your open floor plan. People like to feel like they're in an, an environment that causes them to be successful. Mm -hmm. 